Ex-wife threatened to end herself if I didn't take her back. She cheated with my ex-best friend eight years ago. Ex-wife threatened to end herself if I didn't take her back. She cheated with my ex-best friend eight years ago, but I'm better today. My ex-wife has recently shown up at my door begging me to forgive her and remarry her. Yes, these were her exact words. Forgive me and let's get married again. She told me if I don't take her back, then she will end her life and her blood will be on my hands like my ex-best friends. My ex-best friend fell into drugs after I caught him and my ex-wife sleeping together in my home. John, who's my ex-best friend, did battle with alcohol addiction. He was more of a functioning alcoholic. He worked a job, but I knew, and some other people knew, that on his job he would drink. He wasn't operating any machines or driving any vehicles. He sat at a computer all day. He was a CAD technician. For some mechanical engineering company, he did his work. He's gotten promotions at his job, and he stayed there for years was truly a functioning alcoholic. Water bottle with vodka in it, but everybody loved. My ex-best friend, John. Even though he's no longer here, I still refer to him as my ex-best friend. John couldn't handle it when he got on drugs really bad. I guess he decided to off himself when he was high. They found all types of drugs in his home when he was found. He had been there for four days, and he started to smell, smell from his home. His back door was open, even though John did that to me, hurt me, betrayed me. I still showed up at his funeral, and I still helped out with family and did what I had to do to make sure he was buried properly. And also, I cried and I spoke. At the funeral, I didn't have any urge to get up there and talk about how he slept with my wife and did this and did that. And some people in attendance knew exactly what he did to me, but I didn't go to do that. I spoke highly of John, talked about all the great things he's done in life, all the things he's done for kids at the YMCA, and he would give back and how he was an amazing father. I spoke about those things. I also spoke about how we grew up and how we wanted to be astronauts when we were kids. I told stories about him. True, I hope that you understand why I would do that, but I also understand if you were to tell me that that was probably a stupid idea and I should have probably told everybody how horrible of a person he was because he slept with my wife, but I just didn't have the urge to do it. Man, I, want, I didn't want him to sleep with my wife, but I didn't want him to off himself. And I said some things to him, and I threatened to beat him up, but I didn't want him to do that. For some reason, my ex-wife threatened herself, and it almost put a smile on my face. It wouldn't faze me. I didn't care. If that's what you want to do, it's your life. My ex-wife and I divorced eight years ago, and we were married for seven. In 2009, when I got married, John was my best man. He threw my bachelor party. He cried when he gave a speech at the reception, made me and my ex-wife cry. I would have never, in one million years, thought he would have slept with my ex-wife. Ruined our friendship. Ex-wife never gave me sign before I married her that she would cheat on me. We both drank here and there not as much, especially whenever we were around John. We'd try not to drink as much because... We knew the issue that he had. I tell you guys, you can't even tell that John was an alcoholic. He didn't show any signs. He didn't walk around drooping over with a slur or anything. Highly intelligent man, but alcohol was his weakness. He would drink all day long. My ex-wife Francine told me before we even married that she had zero desire for children, and I was okay with that. I never really cared to have children growing up. If I were to have a child, I wouldn't be devastated. But it never was in my mind to have children. Marriage. Yes, I wanted to be married. Never really considered actually having kids, though. People think that's weird. Maybe it is. But I think if a person doesn't want to have kids, I don't think they should be forced to have kids. Wouldn't I put that kid in a very bad situation? Francine and I traveled often. There were a couple times where we traveled with John, but most of the time we traveled by ourselves and we did everything. 
And it was kind of nice not having kids because we had the freedom to do what we wanted. I remember being on planes and seeing families and dads just being frustrated. Moms being frustrated or even out in Vegas. Imagine taking kids out to Vegas. You have to put them to sleep so you can sneak out and go have some adult fun like gambling. I wouldn't want to take my child to a casino, but we did whatever we wanted and we had an amazing time. We both worked. I had my career. She had her career. We split the bills. We didn't live beyond our means. We lived in a one bedroom apartment above a thrift store. We didn't pay that much in rent. Our bills weren't sky high. We were able to do whatever we wanted and we made great money together. Even on our own, we make great money, but we just had the same mindset of why spend so much on a huge house just because you can? Why drive a Mercedes just because you can buy one off the lot? And we could have just bought a car brand new off the lot easily. We never was into that type of stuff. That's one thing I did love about my ex. She was on the same page as I was when it came to finances. When we traveled, yeah, we did budget, but we saved so much money. We were able to do a lot better when we did travel. But there was a couple times we rented luxury cars just because we wanted to. We had the money to do so because we saved so much throughout the year. Sometimes we'd get a luxury hotel room. Why not? There were many times where we got upgraded for free. The plane and hotels. I guess we just got lucky those times, but we created a lot of good times together. We actually had a great marriage, so I couldn't understand why she would do this to me. Francine had been alone with John several times before, and it never crossed my mind that they were sleeping together. She picked him up from work. He's been alone with her. It never dawned on me that they could sleep together, that they had any interest in each other. I thought they truly looked at each other as brother and sister. The day I walked in on my wife and best friend getting it on was on a day I decided to leave work. I got a huge argument with the team lead. This guy who no longer works there, and I am the team lead in a different department now. Someone else took over his position, but this guy was a complete prick just to set the tone of the day. So I go into work and I complete some work. Some text documents that I had to get done. Tasks at my job that department specifically. We will complete our work and we'll go over it with team leads. Kind of like proofreading things. We'd sit there and go over them together. This man literally was just on one that day because he was taking each sheet. You could read the sheets pretty quickly. To be specific, I'm a graphic designer, but he's reading over the text, making sure everything is spelled correctly and looks right because we, we've already went over our layout and how we're going to design everything. It was just, let's make sure text is correct before we send these proofs out. Anyway, he's going over sheets and he's tossing the sheets at me as he completes them. That looks good. That looks good. Okay, that's good. And every time he's saying this, he's throwing the sheets of paper at me and I'm just watching them fall on the table. One hit me on the arm could have given me a paper cut but it didn't. But after he was done, I looked at him and I said, don't you ever in your effing life throw anything at me again. The team lead flips out and tells me that I'm overreacting and he's not throwing things at me. And if I don't want to work there anymore, I should just quit. All types of bull crap. I took it to HR. At the end of the day, I was given the opportunity to just take a break and head home just to cool off. HR tried to make it as if it was all my fault, and I needed to cool off. It was later discovered that this prick, my team lead, was screwing. The HR, they both ended up getting fired. Someone took over his position, and I became team lead for another department working for Sonics. You guys ever driven by a Sonics that has a more unique look to it? I designed it. The branding. That day I'm headed home. It's before lunchtime around 10.30 in the morning. I'm already pissed off. The last thing I want to do is walk into my apartment and my wife on top of my so-called best friend. She apparently left work early because she still had her work shirt on, but she was nude under. No pants or panties. 
Me walking up the steps to my apartment, you can clearly hear a couple having sex. I didn't think it was my wife and best friend. Even when I got close to the door, I said it must be coming from somewhere else. But when I put my ear up to the door, it clearly was coming from my apartment. I slowly turned the knob. I unlock the door and I go inside. And right there from the front door, you can see them on the couch getting it on. I was crushed. I was devastated. They both just stared at me. My wife stayed on top of it. She's looking back, breathing heavily, and he's staring at me. They had nothing to say. I shut the door and left. I made it to the bottom steps near the entrance, and I look up. No one came running out to stop me. I got my car. I drove. I considered finding a cliff to drive off. I swear if I was on any mountain or near any cliff, I would have hit the pedal and just went. Clear off of a freaking cliff. I went completely silent on Francine and John. I began to block them on whatever I had to block them on. I didn't speak to them. Talk with my lawyer and eventually Francine signed the divorce papers. Francine signed the divorce papers. She never came back. I haven't heard from her in three months. Hopefully it stays this way, man. I don't want anything to do with my ex-wife. She can go and make someone else's life better. She claims she became a better person through therapy, and she is now a better woman. So I hope she learned her lesson and go to someone else and make their life better. She can't do anything for me, not a single thing. Something I am terribly sad about, though, is just still having to see John's son, who still calls me uncle. I have to look him in the eyes and refer to him as my nephew. I don't tell him what his dad did. I don't want him looking at his father in that way. I can see guys here claiming that John's son deserves to know that his father banged his best friend's wife. It's only right that he knows I completely disagree, and if anybody feels that way, I feel bad for you. I truly do. I will never tell John's son what his father did. What would be the point? It doesn't make any sense. I think some people have been scarred so bad. They just want to scar everyone else and try to disguise it as if they're helping. You're not helping anything. Don't become an evil person because someone was evil to you. Dang, dude, I'm sorry you had to go through what you had to go through, man. Um, nobody deserves that, you know. Your best friend and your wife. It's very unfortunate. I've read stories on here like that. It's a very unfortunate situation. But you did the right thing. You ghosted both of them. Now, you may say, oh, well, you know, I ghosted him and he did what he did to himself. And it's my fault. It's not your fault. He chose to do what he did to himself. He betrayed his brother. You know, you guys were close, best friends. You were like brothers. He betrayed you. And he couldn't deal with it anymore. And he was already an alcoholic. So he was either going to drink himself to that situation or like he did. He tried some other drugs and look what happened to him. You know, it's sad. I don't wish that on anybody either. And here's your ex-wife coming crawling back. Please take me back. It's been eight years, ma'am. I don't want anything to do with you. I've been deep sea diving in other oceans, ma'am. I've forgotten all about you. Here she is running and crying. Like, get out of here, ma'am. Get out of here. Guys, if you want to send in a story, send it to TrueStoryNation at gmail.com. Here, I'll put it on the screen. That's TrueStoryNation at gmail.com. I'm going to catch you guys at the next one.